Chapter 20 Using his gymnastics reflexes, Cora reached up as he started to drop and grab the ledge's wooded parallel bar. He missed. His hand slid off the wet stone ledge and he continued to drop, his body sliding straight down against the brick wall. Hey! His feet hit a ledge on the first floor, and instinctively he dived forward, falling through an open window. He landed hard on his hands and knees on a wood floor. It took him what seemed forever to catch his breath. Then he slowly got up on his knees and looked around the dark room. He recognized it immediately. He had fallen into the wood shop. I'll have to thank whoever left that window open, he said aloud. He stood up and stretched and tested his body. He seemed okay except that he still had the feeling he was falling. Remembering Lisa, he hurried out of the shop and into the hallway. He could hear the drum rhythms from the music in the gym echoing down the tall corridor. He turned and took the steps two at a time and ran to the music room. He saw the hall monitor's desk had been jammed against the door. It was heavy, but he shoved it aside and opened the door to the music room. That was quick, Lisa said. She was still slumping in the chair with her ankle up on the desk. I took a shortcut, he said. A half hour later, they were sitting on the low couch in the, in the living room. Lisa propped the swollen ankle up on the coffee table and settled back comfortably against the cushions. Some adventure, Corey said dejectedly. He was thinking about Brad and Anna. Poor Anna. Some first date, she said, staring straight ahead at her ankle. I'm really sorry, I... No, I'm sorry, he said. She leaned forward suddenly and started to kiss him. A soft, tentative kiss. The phone beside the couch rang. They both jumped back. She picked it up quickly, pushing her hair away from her face with her free hand. Hello? She heard breathing at the other end. Hello? Hello? Who is it? Corey asked her. She shrugged. Hello? More breathing. Harsh, rhythmic breathing meant to sound threatening. Why are you doing this to me? Lisa cried. The phone went dead. Lisa tossed down the receiver. Her hands were shaking, but she looked more angry than frightened. This has got to stop, she cried. Cora moved across the couch, intending to comfort her, but she pulled away from him. We've got to call the police, Lisa said. I know, I know, Cora agreed. Just let me talk to Anna first. I'll go see her first thing in the morning. But Brad will be there, won't he? I don't care. I'm not afraid of Brad. I'll get to Anna, and I'll make Anna tell me what's going on. And I'll tell Anna that we have no choice. We have to report Brad to the police. Ouch! She dropped back down to the couch and started rubbing her ankle. Hey, some date. I really know how to show a guy a good time, don't I? At least it wasn't boring, he said, forcing a laugh. He got up and started for the door. Sure it'd be okay? Yeah, sure. Coming right after you talk to her tomorrow, you hear? Right. Don't worry. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, he said. I'll need it.